Hello guys, let's talk about electron affinity. If you watch my video on general trends in the periodic table, you already know that electron affinity is actually the energy change accompanying the addition of an electron to a gaseous atom. It is typically exothermic. This means that we are going to have a negative sign next to the electron affinity and it measures the attraction of an atom to an electron so how much an atom likes an electron the greater the attraction between the atom and the electron the more negative the atom's electron affinity is well from here we can generalize the trend when we go left to right in the periodic table we know that the atomic size actually decreases so the electron affinity is going to be more negative which means that there will be a greater attraction towards the nucleus from the electron that you are adding because it's going to be added closer to the nucleus. It makes sense, right? On the other hand, when we go down in a group, like so, the atomic size will actually increase, so the added electron is far, far away from the nucleus, so the attraction will not be that great, and the electron affinity will become less negative. Let's take a look at some exact numbers. Interestingly, for some elements, electron affinity has a positive value, which is going to mean that the anion, the negatively charged ion that you form, is going to be higher in energy than are the separated atom and the electron. So this is going to mean that when your electron affinity is actually a positive value, then a negatively charged ion will be unstable and it will not form. Several elements are like this in the periodic table, for example, the noble gases. As you can see here, we have argon gas. We add an electron, we would form an argon anion, but the electron affinity is higher than zero. So it all comes down to the electron configuration. Look at argon. Argon has its orbitals fully filled, so the extra electron would go on the next level on n equals 4s orbital. And argon just doesn't want it. It likes to be fully filled and a noble gas, okay? So all noble gases are like this. And we said that the general trend is as you go down in a group, electron affinity should become less negative. Well, let's take a look at the numbers. Here we have the electron affinities in kilojoule per mole. Let's look at halogens. Those are the 7A group elements. You can see that indeed the trend works for chlorine, bromine, and iodine because the values are becoming less and less negative, right? However, fluorine's electronegativity is actually less negative than chlorine's. Why is it happening? This is due to the fact that the 2p orbital in case of fluorine is really, really tiny compared to the p orbitals in chlorine, bromine, and iodine, where you would add the extra electron. So in case of fluorine, because you are trying to add the electron to this small p orbital, the electrons are, oh, you are too close to me. I need more space, right? There is repulsion between the electrons. So the electron that you add will not have enough space. So the fluorine atom will not be as happy as a chlorine atom to get an extra electron. All right, I hope this makes sense. Let's take a look at the other trend. When we go left to right across the period, we know that electron affinity should become more negative. And it generally happens, just look at a boron, carbon, and oxygen, but nitrogen here is a little bit weird. What is going on? Why does it have a higher than zero electron affinity? Well, let's take a look at the electron configuration. So we know that nitrogen actually is element number seven, and we can take a look at oxygen, which is going to be element number eight, because nitrogen does not follow the trend, but oxygen does. So if I write out the electron configuration of nitrogen, I'm going to have two electrons on the 1s orbital, two electrons on the 2s orbital, 
and then three electrons on the 2p orbital. Now the electron orbital diagram, I'm going to do my little boxes down here. We have two electrons here, two electrons here, and on the p orbitals we are going to have three electrons. So when you are adding an extra electron to this nitrogen atom, it has to double up with one of the other electrons, right? So you would add an extra electron right here, for example, and nitrogen's 2p orbital is actually too tightly bound to be able to accept that extra electron. The electron said, no, I'm comfy here. I want to be alone on my orbital. So that's what happens. So when you add an extra electron, nitrogen will not like it and actually n minus ion will be unstable all right so what's up with oxygen so oxygen is going to have an extra electron compared to nitrogen so 2p4 and here is the diagram uh, two electrons on the 2s orbital and then we have the four electrons on the 2p orbital so when you add an extra electron on top of it it would go with one of the unpaired electrons right let's say we could put it here just because there is more space okay so this process is actually happening because there is an extra proton in case of oxygen compared to nitrogen. So oxygen is happy to accept an extra electron. But what's really interesting is that oxygen in oxides going to have a two minus charge. However, when you try to add another extra electron on top of the O minus ion, so let's say you have O minus, in the gaseous phase and you are trying to add an extra electron to form O2 minus in the gaseous phase this will not happen so O2 minus is actually unstable and this process is going to have a positive electron affinity why well we are going to learn later that the O2 minus ion that we see also often is stabilized in ionic compounds by the large attraction that occurs among the positively charged ions and the negatively charged ions but when it's just floating around alone in the gas phase it's not going to form O2 minus okay Bottom line is there is a lot of irregularities in the electron affinity trend. Most of them can be explained by the electron configurations. Generally, just think about this. When we have a fully filled sublevel, it's going to be very, very stable. And the next most stable ones are halfway filled sublevels, just as the 2p orbital in a nitrogen atom without adding or subtracting an electron. So in those cases, you are going to see irregularities. All right, I hope this all made sense. See you in the next video.